In Lesson 8, C8, Scientific Notation, our two standards are EE3 and EE4, we want you to be able to develop a system of understanding the system of scientific notation. This is used to represent really large and small quantities using scientific notation and interpret different ways that scientific notation is displayed on calculators and computers. The definition for scientific notation is a number that is written in scientific notation. It is in this form. You're going to see this poster up in the room, C times 10 to the N. And what this is really telling us is that value C has to be a number that's greater or equal to 1, and that it is less than 10, which means we can't have 10. We can have 9 point something, we can't have 10. If we have 10.1, we're going to rewrite that as 1.01. So we're going to mostly be working with standard form and scientific notation. The product form is just to kind of help you visualize. So if we want to write product form, remember what we said before, we're writing that first number as a number between 1 and 10 also, 2.89 times, and if I was going to multiply this, I would actually be looking at to get 289,000. I'd have to take it times 100,000. Now, how do I write 100,000 in scientific notation? There's two ways of thinking about this. We can look at 100,000 and say, oh, that is five zeros. The other thing you can think of is when you have standard form, you are moving this decimal point one, two, three, four, five places. So we have 2.89 times 10 to the fifth. Key thing, this will always be a positive, ex positive number. If this original number in standard form is larger than 1 or larger than 10. So I'm going to put if larger than 10. What am I referring to as being larger than 10? The number that was in standard form. If we think of this number in product form, it says 8 times 0 .001. When we are looking at that, that's 0 0.008. Small number. What does that mean in our problem? It means that when we rewrite this, we are going to have 8, similar here, a number between 1 and 10, times 10, and we need to think, oh, 1, 2, 3 places. But since it's a small number, it can't be a positive 3, this must be a negative 3. So as we look at that, the key thing is, is that this will be a negative number, and again, what we're going to refer to is our original number in standard form has to be a decimal. So if that original number in standard form is a decimal, then what we are looking at is this exponent will be negative. If the original number is a number bigger than 10, we're going to have a positive exponent. Now, there's going to be some different videos that I'm going to have you watch. We're definitely going to watch the one with vast distances, and we'll probably watch the other one with blood cells. And if there's time in class, we'll take a look at the other two. We're on a tour of New York City with Matt as our companion. This town is a study in contrast. Central Park feels so natural and peaceful, but a quick cab ride downtown showcases mesmerizing architectural feats. We can use scientific notation to help us understand such a wide range of places and a very wide range of distances. Look at a familiar number, 200. In scientific notation, it's 2 times 10 squared. Scientific notation is expressed in two parts. The first part is a number greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. The second part is a power of 10, which the first number is multiplied by. New York City might seem like a big place, but when you consider a perspective that's out of this world, you see it's quite tiny. Let's look at Manhattan Island's length in comparison to the distance between the Earth and the Sun. 
Manhattan Island is 13.4 miles long, and the average distance between the sun and the earth is 92,900,000 miles. That's a lot of zeros to keep track of. There's another way to describe this number that's often more useful. Here comes scientific notation to the rescue. We can write the vast Sun-Earth distance as 9.29 times 10 to the seventh miles. Count how many places you have to move the decimal point to get to a number between 1 and 10. That's the power of 10. Scientific notation is a condensed way to write some numbers, and it also provides an easier way to compare them. Watch, how many Manhattan lengths would it take to reach the sun? We need to divide the distance to the sun by the length of Manhattan. In scientific notation, that can be written as... Break that into parts, since it's multiplying and dividing. It's the same as 9.29 divided by 1.34, all times 10 to the 7th, divided by 10 to the 1st. 9.29 divided by 1.34 is 6.93 to the nearest hundredth. Then, 10 to the 7th divided by 10 is the same as 10 used 7 times in multiplication, divided by 10. Canceling out one of the 10s, you get 10 used 6 times to multiply or 10 to the 6. The ratio is 6.93 times 10 to the 6, or 6.93 million. Using scientific notation to divide is often simpler than doing the long division in expanded notation. This goes for multiplication too. So, how far is it to the sun? To find out, travel the length of Manhattan 6.93 million times at 60 miles per hour non-stop. That would take more than 176 years. So that was the first one where you got really large numbers. The DNA and the blood cell video are much um, shorter videos and they kind of work with this really small numbers. body has fascinated ancient and modern scientists alike. Even though it's one large mass, our bodies host to a multitude of microscopic cells. You hop on the doctor's scale to determine your overall body mass. But how do you express the mass of things too tiny to register on that scale? One way is with scientific notation. We can use scientific notation to represent virtually any rational number and it can help us compare very large or very small things. Scientific notation is a way of writing any number as a number greater or equal to 1 and less than 10, multiplied by a power of 10. So, you can use it to express the weight or mass of your whole body in pounds or kilograms, or ounces, tons, milligrams, or micrograms. Or, you can use it to express the mass of teeny tiny cells and parts of cells that make up your body. Powers of 10 are used in scientific notation. The exponent on the 10 tells us how many times the base number is used in a multiplication. Let's go inside the human body. The average adult has about 5 liters of blood, or roughly 5,000 grams. Meanwhile, a single red blood cell's mass is about this number of grams. We can write these numbers in scientific notation. The exponent of 3 means we multiply 10 times itself 3 times, which is 1,000. But what's the negative exponent? That means it's 1 divided by the base to that power. So 10 to the minus 11th power is 1 divided by 10 to the 11th power. So this is a very low number, close to 0, but not as near as 10 to the negative 20. But 10 to the negative 20th power is even lower, nearer to 0, then 10 to the negative 11th power. So after watching the two videos, what we kind of want you to be thinking about, and we may take a look, like I said, at the other ones in class, is why or what is scientific notation used for? So thinking about that, I want you to 
pause this and write down what you think the reason for scientific notation is. We're going to take a look at what I think it is and you can pause the video again and write this down if you need to. And the key thing that we want you to be thinking about this year in Math 8 is that scientific notation is going to be used to efficiently represent really very, very large or very, very small numbers. So that's the reason we use it. So it's going to be very helpful in your science classes as you continue on. How do we write a number in scientific notation? So here's a situation. Lightning, a lightning flash consists of three or four strokes. The time between each stroke is about 0 .0005 seconds. Write this number in scientific notation. So first thing we want to do is on your paper, you always want to write down the number. Then you want to be thinking, okay, I need the first number to always be between 1 and 10. So where do I need to place the decimal point so it's between 1 and 10? And we need to have a 5. Now I want to count how many places I'm moving it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places. So that tells me my exponent is 5, but because this is a small number, it's going to be negative. So you move the decimal 5 places to the right. The exponent is negative 5. If we are writing our answer, 5 times 10 to the negative 5. Again, remember, this will be negative when the number you start with in standard form is less than 1. How do we write a larger number? The maximum distance from the Earth to Jupiter is 968,100,000 kilometers. That distance in scientific notation. Again, always thinking a number between 1 and 10. So place your decimal point. Remember, if there's no decimal, it's at the back of the number. So now we want to move it so that we get 9. 0.681. One thing I'll have students do is they think they just put the 9 in the 6. You have to put all these digits until you get to a 0. They're all significant. How many places did we have to move our decimal point? Well, we know this is 3. Another 3 is 6, 7, 8 places. So our answer is going to be 9.681. We move the decimal 8 places. It's positive because this is a big number. So our exponent is 8. And our answer to the question is 9.681 times 10 to the 8th. With those videos being embedded, we will probably do a couple of these problems. And then we will go to a second video where you will see them. Um, in each one of these cases, you're asked to write it now in scientific notation on your own. So I want you to try number 1, 2, and 3. Take a look at your notes. What did we just write down? Should the exponent be with our times 10 to a power? Should it be positive or should it be negative? Okay. That's one of the things you have to be thinking about. First number has to be between 1 and 10. Should our exponent be positive or negative? Okay. In each case, we got to think of that. Is the number bigger than 10 or is it less than 0? So pause it and try it right now. Remember, each of our answers needs to look like this when we're done, and I'm going to go through them. The first one, the number should be 9. The decimal is here. We are moving it 1, 2, 3 places, 10 to the third. In this next one, if you've tried this one, we need to move our decimal, so we have 3.25. That means we're moving our decimal 1, 2, 3, 4 places, negative 4. So one thing I like students to think about with those negatives is that you will notice you have three zeros, and this is always going to be a digit more. So it's four, but it's negative. Okay. Here, we're going to have 1.207. We're going to move it over three, six, nine places. So I'm going to stop this video now, and we'll do the second half on the next video.